Hey everybody, Chef Vince here, coming from Pritikin in Miami, Florida. Today we're gonna to show you some nice, easy to prepare healthy dishes. We have some lemon braised sea bass. We're also gonna pair that up with a fennel and mango salad, all with this citrus herb dressing. Stay tuned, we're gonna keep the calories down, but the flavor up. Better is better, progress is progress. Well, what we got cooking today, Chef? Well, Kara, we're gonna do some lemon braised sea bass. Sea bass, so we're changing it up because normally I see you doing some salmon, but today we're doing some Chilean sea bass, which actually is a fish that I really enjoy. Yeah, I mean, most people do, right? That's why it's $35 a pound. Um, and that's a wholesale price. So when we're buying sea bass here, uh, we're looking to get a nice fresh sea bass. This is how we portion it out, uh, about you know four and a half, five ounces at the most when it's raw. We recommend that, uh, having about four ounces cooked animal protein, or I guess we would say allow it, not recommend it, but allow you know, that animal size. protein. Yeah, yeah. We try to go for more plant-based protein, but if you want to have it, try to go for more lean. You know, animal proteins and fish is a good choice. Yeah, especially Chilean sea bass. Yeah, one of the reasons why fish is a really good choice is um, most fish is very lean in protein and, and lower in cholesterol. Uh, I will say Chilean Chilean sea bass is a little bit higher in fat than some of the other fish. It is considered a fatty fish, but it the a lot of the fats that are in there are omega three fatty acids, which actually are good for cholesterol lowering. And one of the things that I always say in my classes that I get a little chuckle about from, from our guests is um, when thinking about wh which animal protein foods you wanna eat more or less often, think about how many legs the animal has. <laughs> so the less legs, the better, right? The cow has four, the fish has none, the chicken has two. So less legs, better. You won't see a serving snake here, but I mean, you know. Oh, snake, yeah. <laughs> No, 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 we're joking. All right, so we're gonna, so other fish options that you can have in, in addition to having the salmon or the sea bass, we've served halibut, we've served wahoo, we've served uh, mahi snapper, you know, all types of good fish you can, you can certainly have as, as right. options. So um, what I did was just season that, uh, that up with some of uh, my Pritikin uh, all-purpose seasoning here. This is a combination of paprika, granulated onion, granulated garlic. We have some coriander ground up in here, some uh, parsley, and uh, some dry oregano. No salt and added. No salt added. Correct. Correct. Main thing. Uh, and you can make this yourself. It's not hard to make. And this is uh, some ground up table blend of Mrs. Dash. So that's all lots of seasoning on there. Easy enough. Mrs. Dash has lots of flavor. There's like dehydrated flakes of like carrot and bell pepper and all types of tomato granules and onion in there. Lots of flavor. So uh, if it's not ground up, I would say grind it up in a little bullet blender like this. That's what we like to do here. It's almost like grinding up fresh black pepper as opposed to grinding up or, or buying the one that's already pre-ground. Because the original Mrs. Dash is kind of coarse. It's kind of like flakes of vegetables. So it doesn't work so good if it's not a powder for like a seasoning like this. So make sure it's a powder. When you get and also when grounding these um, these spices, it also can release the the health benefits that come with them, like you know anti you know decreasing inflammation and antibacterial and all of these things. That um, when you, even seeds like chia seeds and hemp seeds, when they're whole, they kind of just go right through. But when you grind them, it releases the essential oils and the health benefits that that go along with them. So one other thing I wanted to add about the Chilean sea bass is it is also a great source of vitamin D. And vitamin D is not that easy to get in our diet. So um, you can get it from the Chilean sea bass, you can get it from the salmon. And vitamin D is really good for your immune function. Um, it actually is good for mood, helps increase mood. And vitamin D is great for the bones. So, and the other thing, the, the main reason why we're, the, the dish that we're making today is one of the things that I noticed about a lot of the people that I work here with at Pritikin is um, they love making all these awesome recipes, but sometimes they're a little bit time consuming. So today we're focusing on fast. And Chef promised me 10 minutes. This like could be you know, done. We're, we're, we're talking a lot here. 10 ish but, you know. minutes. Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to crack that whip. Let's chop away um, here. So th the theme of today is really what, what can we prepare that's really um, healthy, anti inflammatory, um, good for our bones? and is super, super fast and actually tastes really good because I think I think that's always the goal. We, we tend to eat out a lot or order things or um, buy prepared foods, mostly because they're easy, convenient, and portable. So we're just gonna show you another way to do something easy, convenient, and you can take it with you wherever you go. Um, and it doesn't have to be loaded with sugar, salt, and fat. Yeah, now the sea bass, you can go ahead and cook a, uh, an extra one or two pieces. We're gonna cook three pieces here today because we have, do have somebody filming this and he was looking like he was hungry too. So, you know, he was like, okay. where's the other piece at, Chef? Anyway, 
Okay, so, so this is like an them. entree salad, right? We're gonna pair this up, this lemon brace uh, sea bass, uh, with the whole entree salad, which we're making here now with the fennel mango salad. We chopped some bell peppers, some poblano peppers, some red onions. I'm gonna go back to the salad in a second. Right now, I'm gonna start actually doing the fish. I'm gonna take this tool here called a microplane. Uh, this is actually a brand called microplane. It's simply just a little grater, a zester essentially. It takes the, the zest off of the lemon, right? So as I'm doing this, I mm -hmm. wanna rotate the lemon so that way I'm not getting too deep into the white part, which becomes more bitter. That's gonna be enough for me today. I'm gonna to take the juice out of at least these, maybe two or three lemons here, depending how juicy they are. I always like to do this over a separate oh, with the bowl, tongs. Love the right? little technique. Yeah, do it and with the cut side up too. That way, that way the seeds up. stay inside and your juice comes pouring out and cover it, right? That way you don't get any juice squirting you in or me eyes. in the eyes. Getting lemon juice in your nice. eyes is not gonna be a very fun thing. That wouldn't be fun. And you might not be realizing this, Chef, but by zesting the 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 rind, the skin of the lemon. Um, that's where a lot, of, I mean, vitamin C absolutely is in the juice, but it's really also in the rind. So you're getting really good vitamin C antioxidant value going on here. So make sure you utilize the whole lemon. Don't, don't just use the juice and really strong flavor, right? I mean, um, look, you can just use the zest, honestly, besides without the, juice. the juice. If you think the juice is too acidic for some things, like if you were to True put that. like uh, like maybe uh, zest into like even oatmeal, right? Like adding orange zest and oatmeal really brightens it, it up. It just really gives it a real big pop of flavor. Yeah, yogurt, sour cream, a little bit of just water, right? So, yep, all right, yep, so yep. lemon zest and lemon juice. We're also gonna use a little bit of white wine here as well. This way I have everything ready to go for my liquid that I need. We're simply going to start off by pan searing this fish. And as opposed to flipping it over after about three minutes of cooking it on one side, and cooking it maybe well, maybe another minute or two on the other side, we're not gonna flip it at all, right? We're gonna add that liquid that we just did. And braising it simply means starting off with the sear. Woo, it's hot. And then, yeah, it's hot, maybe a little too hot. So starting it off with the sear and then finishing it with a liquid. Now, this is a good quality stainless steel pan that can take a little bit of abuse like that. That can, you know, if it's too hot, I'd always rather have it be, you know, cooling it down faster than, you know, I'm waiting for it to get hot here now. You know what I mean? So, so that was do, a cooling down. Little... That's just the cool it down. Yeah, okay. I just throw a little water in there because I want it to be hot. Basically, right there, there's a little smoke coming off, and that's but not a, too much. And that's a high heat spray, right? Because right. you're putting cold fish into a hot pan. What's going to happen is you're going to drop the heat, right? I mean, you want right. to maintain that heat so it actually gets brown, actually gets a sear, gets that crust. This is only going to get a crust on one side in the way we're going to cook it today. The pan's been preheating on like a medium low. I'm gonna put it on a medium high now, actually increasing the heat even higher. So press that down a little bit here. So suffice to say, you really don't need hardly any oil at all. You saw this oil I put, right? Just so a spritz. Sea bass, salmon have natural oil, a little bit more fat that come out of it, especially. Remember that. So we'll go ahead and let that cook for just about maybe another minute or maybe two minutes or so on that one side. And then we'll add that liquid in there. So and so again, we don't cover it at all? Not yet, not yet, but we okay. will. Okay. Here at the Pritikin Center, it's like rainbows and unicorns. All you gotta do is show up and everything is planned and prepared for you. But when you get home, get ready for those lions and tigers and bears. Whether you're racing out the door to work and skipping breakfast or glued to the Zoom call and no time for lunch, or maybe you're in retirement and every day is a holiday. The solution, you need a plan. My name is Kara. I've been a registered dietitian for over 20 years and I've helped thousands of clients create sustainable plans that stick. At the Pritikin Center, we offer a one-to-one -one remote nutrition coaching program with me. Together, we will create a customized plan that addresses your lifestyle, your health markers, and any of those derailers that lead you astray. Support and accountability can be the difference between finding success and constantly chasing after it. Sign up today for more information about Pritikin at Home Concierge Nutrition Program. All right, so back to this. We have some other things we're adding in here besides- So we got some peppers, green and red. Um, again, vitamin C seems to be the theme right here with our juice and, and our red onions. Actually, we call this the vitamin C salad. The vitamin C salad. Great antioxidants and beautiful colors, by the way. You know how we like to eat with our eyes. So you're making this very appetizing with the beautiful colors, more color, more antioxidants. Yeah. All right, so 
We're going to go ahead and cut up this jicama here as well. I'm going to go ahead and we cut the top and the bottom off. And jicama has that nice crunch to it. It's a nice vegetable to keep raw, have it a, uh, a chopped salad, have it as a little crudite, you know, whatever it may be. We're going to put this into our salad here today, cut it especially thin, and then we're going to julienne it. All right. And jicama, um, we, we put here now. no problem. Okay. All that Getting steam. thirsty. And then you top it. Yes. Okay. So add the liquid and then top and get a nice little facial going on at yeah. the same time. <laughs> Look, it's Woo! already cooking on the other side, right? <laughs> yes, it is. So here's the beauty of this recipe. Maybe I don't need it right now. I can go ahead and take it off the pan or take it off the, the, the pan off the burner for like maybe 10 minutes. Maybe I'm still roasting vegetables when cooking rice. Who knows? Whatever. This is the beauty of this type of recipe. I can just take it off the burner right now. If I need it right now, put it back on the burner. But we don't need it. We're taking a break. Yeah. Well, I'm going to I'm going to let it keep on cooking because I actually want to serve it not hot on the salad. So I'm going to finish cooking it now. I let it just stay, you know, off to the side. That way I can just let it kind of slowly cool down. And that right. way, you know, it, it just and gives then you put it on the cold salad. Yeah, it's not, you don't want to put like a hot, hot fish on there. Yeah, it's maybe I agree warm, with you. you know? All right, so. Back to jicama. Back to jicama. We have the liquid in there. We covered the pan. That's going to take maybe another two minutes to cook through. If I'm doing that recipe with chicken, I would advise you to go ahead and flip that chicken over at this stage right now. But with something like sea bass or salmon or most fish, especially the way we cut it here, which is a little bit more thin, uh, it, it's going to cook through just that steam hooding it on the other side just fine. So Sounds jicama, good. peppers, onions. We also are going to put a little bit of candy cane beet. If you never worked oh, with this one here. Nice. Right? I just wanted to say one little thing about the jicama because, you know, not a lot of people use jicama or, or eat it a lot for whatever reason. I think it's a little forgotten. But one really important property of jicama is it's kind of coarse. So it has these things called prebiotic fibers. And so those fibers are what feed the probiotics that are the living, breathing organisms in our gut that help keep us um, from getting all sorts of diseases. So the jicama is a, is a great snacking tool. It's very crunchy. People are always asking me, Kara, what can I eat with a crunch that's healthy? Jicama is really um, one of the first things I go to and also the candy cane beets just because they're really cool looking. And one other cool thing I want to tell you about the jicama um, because one of, one of my clients today, like my clients love to send me pictures of what they're doing, um, just so that, so I can see what's going on in the background. And he sent me, he made jicama tacos. Oh yeah. So you can actually buy at the grocery store, um, tacos, like little taco, uh, tor they look like little tortillas and they're made literally only from jicama. Nice. So it's a really nice low calorie, low carb solution to do your taco Tuesday. So nice. I thought that was cool. Hickam is very versatile. So, I mean, I always tell people to try that out. And like I said, the other ones as well, candy cane beet and the other vegetable I just chopped up was also the watermelon. A, a watermelon radish. radish. If you never worked with this one here before, uh, that has a real nice little color and contrast to it with that purple, uh, you know, uh, inside. And then the, it looks like watermelon, but it's not, it's a radish. <laughs> <laughs> so Super we're going to take cool. this carrot here and I can go ahead and, and, and julienne this carrot with a knife. How we do on fish. Look, check out that liquid. Almost no liquid left, right? That's where I want to take this fish to. So maybe just one, maybe just 10 more seconds. And 10 we'll more pull seconds. It. So we're going to take this tool here. Kind of looks like a peeler, but I'm going ahead and Julianne. julienning it right off of this carrot. This also works for cucumbers and zucchini or parsnips or daikon radish. Don't so do this at home, the little flip. <laughs> Did a little flip there. Again, more color. Love it, chef. So we got lots of um, the carrot, lots of beta carotene going on in there. So more antioxidant, antioxidant power. This is a super, super food lunch going on or dinner, whatever you want it to be. Yeah. So lots of stuff going on in here. Let's add the fennel, right? Fennel has a strong aromatic flavor to it. it has it's like a kinda, bulb. Yeah. It's like a bulb. It has a bulb, has layers like an onion. I try to tell people you're better off taking these layers apart and cutting them up individually like this here. This way you're getting a nice, more even effective way to cut the, uh, the, 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 the fennel. So that strong licorice flavor works great if you want to go ahead and cut it in half and roast it right in a, in a pan, right? Like spray a sheet tray, put it in like this, spray the top of the fennel a little bit with some cooking spray, roast it at like 400 degrees, maybe like 25 minutes or so. And it right. really comes out nice and sweet. You can make a soup out of that. You can do all types of stuff with that roasted fennel. Right, and another thing that we talk about here at Pritikin all the time 
um, over and over and over again is the front loading with vegetable situation, right? We're always trying to front load anything with vegetables to get those low calorie dense foods in there, help fill our belly so that when we get to the higher calorie dense foods, we don't need as much of them. And um, actually there are some studies that show that fennel um, can kind of suppress appetite a little bit. That is one of the things that you know, whether it does or it doesn't, sometimes when you hear that, you believe it to be true. And, and the truth is, all of these foods should be quite filling because they're fibrous and fiber is filling. It helps keep us satiated, not to mention help keep our gut health really, really good. But um, you can think of any vegetable or any fruit, very convenient, very portable, right? And very healthy. So it doesn't take a lot of time to prepare. So Fruits and vegetables are your, your go-tos when you want something quick and convenient um, and satisfying. This is a super sweet mango here. I mean, I, I, this is like- Ooh, it looks know, really good. I, I tried picking out the best ones I have here, which we always have sweet ripe mangoes here. You always try to have them on hand. So when you're picking out a ripe mango, you're looking for kind of the ripeness to be kind of like something similar to an avocado, right? A little bounce to the skin, not bushy, uh, but not press. hard as a rock, right? right. So More color, love it. Yeah. So um, again, lots of vitamin C in the mango. Um, one thing I will mention about a mango, not, not to take away its, its healthful properties, but if you have some blood sugar issues going on, um, we call fruit nature's candy. Some fruits are a little bit more higher in sugar content than others. Um, I would put mango quite up there. It's a tropical fruit, so it's a little bit more sugary. So if blood sugar is an issue, I wouldn't say you can't have the mango, but you really wanna be mindful about how much you're using. Um, when you're cooking with it and make sure that you're having it with other fibrous foods or even like something protein like the fish to help stabilize those blood sugars and not make them go up too high. Yeah. Now, look, we probably won't get this whole recipe done in, in 10 minutes, but, you know, it's really... Uh, what We're at 11, just let you know. It's whatever... <laughs> It's whatever vegetables that you want to put into here as well, right? Like, so you're saying I mean, if we put less, I mean, it could be 10 minutes. To have, I mean, we probably have enough here. And, All right. And just to give you more for variety, right? Like I didn't even chop up every one of these things that I'm using here, at least the complete, you know, bell pepper. I had more that I left right. over. You so know, that's so, the beauty of it, right? Like you could add as much or as little as that you have time for. And, the important and, thing is you add some vegetables But meal it. prep in this way, right? Like if I had those peppers that I chopped up, if I just store them in a container, I can last them again for something else. Put them in a stir fry a day or two later, you know, so whatever it may be. So cut extra is your... Is yeah. your uh... And try to keep them dry, right? Put paper towels that are dry on the top and bottom of the container. So they don't uh, get all And that mush. way they, they stay fresher for... I mean, you can keep peppers like that for quite, quite a while. This leftover juice from the citrus, I'll squeeze out of there. Uh, the leftover... Uh, even the leftover nectar, right, from this, from this mango. You can take this... And just squeeze this Ooh, out here, right? Wow. I mean, Give some sweet. Yeah. So, you know, it just gives you a little, little more flavor. Little dash of sweet. Love you it. You can just chew on the rest, rest of this and eat it, honestly. It's so sweet and juicy. So, uh, but that way we get it all out. But there's a big awkward pit in the center of that mango, so you really won't be able to get it all out of there. So if you saw what I did was I cut around the core of the of the grapefruit as opposed to uh, simply just kind of cutting in between the segments. This way you're, you're, you're retaining more of that little extra fibrous bit in the, in the center and actually just getting more yield overall of, of whatever you're using. We're putting some grapefruit and orange in here. More this vitamin could be some C, guys. Clementines. This could be whatever, Whatever right? you got on hand. Could you grab me that big bowl right there, Kara? Yes, I can. We're going to just go ahead and pour everything in the big bowl. Uh, we have that fish still kind of cooling down here and we haven't flipped it over yet. That's a very kind of boring fish. That's what a poached fish looks like, right? If I take, if I had taken that lemon and white wine, maybe add some vegetable stock perhaps, and I put that in the pan first and heat that up and just drop raw fish in there, then you're poaching, right? Right. If you never add liquid and you only sear on both sides, you're searing, searing. it. When you add liquid to a seared fish, you're technically braising the fish, right? You know, you're okay. not fully submerging it like you would by poaching it. But you're getting the opportunity when we flip that over, that's gonna have a nice crust and a nice sear that's on the other side. That's what we're looking for. Yeah. The crust and, and presentation, sear. right? So this is ready to go ahead and give this a quick Just mix. Just show everybody the bowl of vitamin C ness going on in here. It's beautiful. Yeah. So lots and of flavor, colorful. lots of color here. We're gonna go ahead and make a quick dressing here that you can really be pretty versatile with and 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 and, and swap out things for other 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 um and maybe make herbs, a little extra of the dressing so you have it for another recipe so it's already Look, done. You can take grilled chicken, you could take chicken and grill and, and, and marinate it in here and, and, and grill it, you know what I mean? Or even some of the fish. So the citrus herb dressing, which you're about to make, is a very unique, nice dressing that is, is, is just a kind of starting point of things that you can build off of. So first off, we're going to take some flat leaf parsley and cilantro. 
we're taking more parsley than cilantro, uh, and that's where you can maybe add basil as opposed to if adding cilantro. Have. Or don't like it, right? Or Whatever. don't like. Maybe I want to add lime as opposed to orange here and have a cilantro lime. Just take the cilantro out, keep the orange, have you know, have the basil orange. You know, like, so it's a template, of, what you're you know, saying. Exactly, it's, exactly. It's an herb and, a, and an acid yep. and a juice. So we have parsley to start off with, cilantro to add a lot more flavor. We're adding orange juice concentrate to add a lot more flavor. This is apple cider vinegar as well. We're also adding apple juice concentrate, still concentrated. These are all still concentrated. That way it gets a lot of you know, strong flavor into it. A little bit of um, uh, Dijon mustard I have here as well. And a little bit of garlic. So um, you, you might be wondering, oh my God, am I putting too much juice in this, in this salad dressing? And um, I wanna remind you that when yeah. we make the salad dressings here, we make sure that um, the serving size doesn't include um, any derivative of sugar, even if it's a, a natural one, not a processed one, within the first three to five ingredients. So um, rest assured that this definitely has some sweetness in it, but a little bit goes a long way. So we're not using that much for, this is for the entire You're recipe. You're not drinking this, right? Yeah, so, I mean, this makes a lot. First of all, typical salad dressings usually include a lot of oil, um, which there's no oil in here, so. So when there's no oil, you're really taking away a lot of the calories to the dressing, which is usually the saboteur of the salad, right? You can have this beautiful salad with all these awesome low calorie vegetables, and then you pour all this fat onto exactly. it. This, this doesn't have it. Um, and most salad dressings use sugar. This is, not, <laughs> this is a juice concentrate. So it is, it is, it is a healthier version. Um, and it just adds a nice sweetness to the, uh, to the salad. So let that toss all together. I, I overdress the vegetables like this because yes, I'm going could. to leave the the, 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 the the lettuce dry. And that, ah, that's right, right? Okay, so I, got, I see the method to his madness. He put a little extra dressing in there, but it, it still has some things. And by the way, this is just adding more fluff, yeah. more fullness to so, the recipe with no calories. So here I have some greens that we get from a local um, hydroponic farm called Imagine Farms. These are nice... Beautiful fluffy greens here, nice and crisp always. And so we'll take a nice big pile of that. We'll take a nice big pile of our vegetables. And again, I'm not like pouring the whole thing over, right? right you have a lot of dressing, it. but I, I wanted to go all coat them in that. That way, I and can even let this kind of marinate. I was going to say it would taste even better later, right? When Absolutely. it's been sitting in the dressing for a while. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh my God! I wish you all could smell what's going on here. It really that. smells delicious. Okay, so let's go ahead and flip over the actual fish. Let's do it. We're skimping with this this mango here, and this one, this one here. Oh, get a little mango. <laughs> so if you're looking for something sweet and healthy and not gonna drive you to want to eat M&Ms and cookies, <laughs> this is honestly the way to go. Really, really sweet, but doesn't incur cravings. Exactly. Oh my God, do you see? Can you see? <laughs> so the fish is slightly still warm. You know, it's not it's not hot. Um, you know, it's it's not blazing hot. There's a little bit of warmth to it. That way it kind of coats everything. It goes with the salad. And it goes with the salad nicely. So that's it. I think we're maybe at 15 minutes. I don't know. Right about 15. But by the way, you know, if it was me doing this at home, I probably wouldn't have used all the variety of the vegetables. I yeah. probably wouldn't find the candy cane radish and the watermelon radish. So just know that, you know, this is the chef. He makes everything look so beautiful. Um, but us just lay people that are not chefs, we can still do this and we can do it really quick and, and easy. You could take this to work with you. You, I mean, you can make it in 10 minutes and um, super high in antioxidant value. Great vitamin D, great for the mood, great for the bones, great for your gut health. Way to go, chef. That's it. Thanks, folks. Lemon Brace, Chilean sea bass, citrus fennel salad. Enjoy. Enjoy. Folks, if you like this video and you want to see another cooking demonstration, click here. If you want to listen to our podcast, click here.